welcome back. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. I know, and Happy New Year. Yes, but it is so good to be, it was a nice little break, but it is good to be back here it with you all. It is good to be back. Yes, I think so too. So, well, let's get started. So, do you remember our Bible verse from Psalms? Okay. Yes. All right, well, let's say it in unison. So, are we ready? Okay. Let, Let the, the words, words of my mouth and, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Awesome. Great. Great job. Okay. Well, we have just celebrated the Feast of Epiphany. Uh, Epiphany is celebrated on January 6th. It completes the 12 days of Christmas. It marks the visit of the Magi, the wise men, recorded in Matthew. Uh, it's verse two, chapter one through 12. And it says, the Magi entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored Jesus. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So. Epiphany is a season of four to nine weeks from the Feast of Epiphany, January 6th, through the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. The length of the season can vary according to the date of Easter. The gospel stories of this season describe various events that manifest the divinity of Jesus. Examples are the coming of the Magi, the baptism of Jesus, the last Sunday after the Epiphany is always devoted to the Transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Jesus' identity as the Son of God is dramatically revealed in the Transfiguration Gospel. Yes, you're right. That is a dramatic story. Yes. So, well, what is our story today? Oh, I've got a great story to tell y'all. So, sit back and we'll be with you in just one minute. Wait. Today for Epiphany, I'm going to read you an Epiphany story called The Last Straw. And I thought we'd sit here in church in front of our beautiful nativity scene. And um, what I thought you might want to do is pause this video and go get some pillows or um, your blanket or some stuffed animals, something to make you feel comfortable and snuggle up while I read this story to you. The book is called The Last Straw, and it's written by Friedrich H. Theory, and it's illustrated by Vlasta von Kampen, and, it's, and it is published by Tailwinds. The Last Straw. Hoshmakaka, the old camel, was asleep in the desert night. He dreamed of all the water in the world and the hump that would hold an entire sea. Hearing voices, Hoshmakaka opened one eye. Hoshmakaka, Hoshmakaka. Reluctantly, Hoshmakaka opened the other eye. Why should I wake up? He grumbled. Though sand whirled up into the moonlit sky, you have been chosen, the voices whispered. The sand seemed to shift. You will carry gifts to a baby king. Who are you? Hoshmakama wanted to know, for he was an old camel and felt he had earned his sleep. You will carry gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men have chosen you. Hoshmakaka got up very slowly. Why me? If these men are so wise, don't they know about my joints, my gout, my sciatica? What did you say I am to carry? How much weight will it be? Besides, I have other commitments. There's a water drinking competition in Rangal. Then I must go to the cud chewing convention in Beamish. The sand blew furiously, cutting into the black night. Hoshmakaka was startled and decided that he had better do what the voices said. Who knew what made the sand move like creatures with great wings? When do I start? He asked carefully. Today. And with that, the sand voices disappeared 
and it was morning. It was early as the servants of the wise men placed the precious gifts onto Hashemakakah's back. The young camels ran to their good friends. They all looked up to him because he was old and they thought he was very wise. Oh, you must be so special, they sighed. Oh, well, I am very special. Hashemakamah puffed out his chest in pride and then said something a little foolish. I am not so old. I can am still as strong as ten horses. I have been chosen to carry rich gifts to the new baby king. <gasps> Can we come too? asked the youngest camel, who never wanted to be left behind. Aren't we your friends? shouted another. You can walk beside me, Hoshmakama replied in his most regal voice. And then the long journey began. At noon, a herd of mountain goats came into view. Hoshmakaka thought that they had come a long way from their mountain home in the north. What is it you want? Hoshmakaka called out. We have heard tell of the new king who's to be born. Please take our humble gift with you. It is milk for the king. You want me to carry milk? Hoshmakaka sputtered back in shock. I am not a milk-bearing camel. I am not ordinary like you. The young camels chorused, oh no, he's not ordinary. They looked up to him with their big brown eyes. He's strong. Why, he is as strong as 10 horses. Hoshmakaka muttered to himself, my joints, my gout, my sciatica. And aloud, he said grandly, give me your gift. At one o'clock, he was stopped by a family of millers. Look, said the youngest camel, they're carrying bags of ground corn. Do you suppose they're for the new king? They will have to carry it themselves, Hoshmakaka replied. They can follow the star like the rest of us. The young camels crowded around Hoshmakama early, eagerly. But you're so strong. You're as strong as 10 horses. Hoshmakaka felt very weary just looking at the bags. But he said to the millers, Give me your heavy bags. I will carry them. At two o'clock the next day, young ladies gave Hoshmakaka their fine silks. At least the fine cloth doesn't weigh anything, he thought. At three o'clock, an old man in fine clothes gave him two rare birds in silver cages. At four o'clock, some merchants gave him pillars of oak that came all the way from Lebanon. At five o'clock, a group of bakers gave him their freshest sweetmeats and pastries. At six o'clock, the sun finally went down and the crowds melted into the coming night. Hoshmakaka gratefully sank into the sand. In the kind darkness, he didn't have to pretend that he was as strong as 10 horses. Hoshmakaka became aware that it didn't seem as dark as usual. He looked up and saw the splendor of the skies and the special brightness of the star he had been following. He fell asleep, wondering about the sand voices and the wings that he had thought he could almost see.
But as the sun rose over the desert hills, it was hard to remember the wonder of that star. For the new day brought new pains and new burdens for, for Hushmakaka. I don't think I can make it. I can't carry anymore. My legs are getting weaker. My gout, my sciatica, my joints. I am too loaded down. Word of the caravan had spread like sand before the desert wind. People lined the route, holding up their gifts for Hushmakama to take to the baby king. There were jars full of honey, baskets of money. There were jewels and beads and large rolls of leather. And at last but not least, there were 20 gallons of wine. Hoshmakama moaned to himself, this will bring me to ruin the fruit of the vine. But then the youngest camel cried out, look, look, it's Bethlehem. You've made it, Hoshmakama. You're as strong as 10 horses. Hoshmakaka knew that he could just do it if he didn't stop until he arrived at the spot beneath the star. He could do it, he knew he could. And just then, out of the growing darkness, a small voice said, I have a gift for the baby. Hoshmakaka looked down at the tiny child. Please, child, no more gifts. It has no weight, and it's long, and it's light, and it's for the king who is born this night. It's little, added the little child. It's too much, Hoshmakama whispered. Didn't I hear them say that you were as strong as 10 horses, asked the child. Well, yes, I am, sort of, but my joints, my gout. Hoshmakama looked into the child's eyes and his heart melted. Yes, child, give it to me, this smaller than small gift. What harm can it do? It's for his bed. It's all I have. No problem at all, said Hoshmakama bravely, if foolishly. At this time, Hoshmakaka kept walking because he knew if he stopped, he would not be able to start again. Now he could see that the star shone down upon a lowly stable. Child, do it now. Place your straw upon my back as I approach the new king. Hoshmakaka entered the stable. My knees are loosening, my legs they wobble, my back is breaking. Will the straw cause me to fall? And with that, Hoshmakaka fell to his knees. Oh my, he thought, this is no way for a camel to behave. They will say that Hoshmakaka, the weak camel, Hoshmakaka, the proud camel, could not have traveled this far. The wise men noticed Hoshmakaka. Quickly, they knelt too. <gasps> They're mocking me now, falling on their knees, heads bent over like gnarled old trees. And then, from the humble manger, a tiny hand reached out and touched Hoshmakaka. His pain seemed to disappear, and he could no longer feel his burden. Hoshmakaka whispered to the baby, Hosanna from Hoshmakaka. Accept these gifts kindly. They come from far and wide, brought by a beast who once acted blindly. From that time on, there was no burden too great or too small that Hoshmakaka 
could not carry. Amen. Now we want to give you a blessing. A blessing is something you receive. So open your hands like you are ready to receive a gift. I will speak the blessing. If you receive it, take the blessing and put it in your heart. Like, like the star that lights the way for the wise men, you are a light to the world. You are a bright light and a gift to all who know you. Amen. Okay, I'm here in the church because I wanted to show you all our beautiful nativity scene. And I'm gonna move in close since we couldn't be at church this year to really look at it. And there is Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus and a shepherd. Oh no, it's a wise man, because he has a crown, I see. But over here, some shepherds with some sheep, another shepherd. And now the wise men. And a shepherd in the back, and a donkey. We don't have a camel, like in The Last Straw, the book that I just read to you. But I thought you might want it to see it because it is so pretty. Okay, so now today, we're gonna do something a little bit different each week. And we have a new minister. His name is A.J. Heine. And what would you like for us to call you? Um, grown-ups usually call me AJ. Um, sometimes they call me Father AJ, which right. is okay if they really need to. Um, kids usually call me Father AJ. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is each week we're going to have a segment called Ask Father AJ. And I'm going to ask Father AJ questions. And I also, too, if you all want to ask Father AJ any questions, I have made it so you're mom or dad or a parent in your family can email me questions and we'll ask him so we can get to know him better. So here is my first question. I'm ready. All righty. Okay, so we're all going to say that Father AJ's last name of Heine is funny. It's funny to have that last name, Heine. So what I wanted to ask you is that we've all had our names made fun of or we've been made fun of or something and you know it can be hurtful and so how was it oh. to grow up with the last name of Heine how did you do it well thank you for asking and yes I have learned to find it funny and I have learned to uh that it has its benefits but when I was a kid it was not so much fun especially okay. the first day of school oh I dreaded the first day of school, the first day of school where the teacher would say, AJ Hein? <laughs> and I'd have to say, it's Heine. Oh no. And she oh, would say, horrible. what? And I'd have to say a little louder, it's Heine. And then people uh, would giggle. Uh. And then it seemed like every time she'd say, I still can't hear you. Oh. And I'd say, Heine. Oh, that's and, horrible. But, I had a lot of support along the way from um, from my, I have two cousins that were older than me and also with the last name Heine mm -hmm. and they really challenged me because it was tempting. I could have said, oh, Heine, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. But they really did. They challenged me to be proud of our last name, proud of our family's heritage and to, um, and to be courageous and saying, no, it's Heine. Yeah. It's just a name. Get over it. And yeah. so it did. It taught me a lot about um, about perseverance, uh, about getting through difficult times where people are being um, unkind, um, about forgiveness, because people are not always kind, but that doesn't mean that they're not kind people. They just sometimes make mistakes and aren't thoughtful. Um, so I, now I've come to love my last name because people do remember it. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, You're yeah. right. We, we'll never forget you, that's for sure. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And you know, everybody, if you are going through a hard time, please ask Father AJ. You know, I know that, um, you know, if you even need for him to talk to you, y'all can get together. We can work it out and you can have a conversation with Father AJ because I know, I mean, gosh, who better than Father AJ to help us out and times of that yes Ooh. we can get through times of teasing uh, if you can we can that's for sure okay so the other question is are you married yes yes I am oh good I am married um, my wife's name is Shannon Shannon Payne so this is kind of going along with that yeah <laughs> um, she when we got married she had to choose whether or not to take the last name Heine oh. or not and she decided, and I have to say, I agreed with her on this, that if she had taken the last name Heine, and if she had been therefore called Shannon Payne Heine, oh. or Shannon Heine Payne, <laughs> that that would probably be more than any one person should have to live with. Yeah, so, you're right. So she uh, retained her, her surname. So her name is Shannon Payne. And look, awesome. I, I just happen to have a picture of her here. Oh, perfect. Can you show us so a picture this is of her? My, Beautiful wife, Shannon Payne. She is filled with life and joy and uh, a lot of positive energy. And I hope I hope you'll get a chance to meet well, her soon. Well, one time maybe we can have her come on. Oh, she would love that. You know, she that would, would be great. That. I think that would be awesome. Okay, and so my, my next question is, do you have any children? And how old are they? And what do they do? I do, I do. I have um, two children who uh, are from my first marriage. I'm, I'm married, I've been married twice. Um, and in our first, my first marriage, we had two children. So they're older. Um, Emily is my first child. She's 28. Okay. And she lives in Denver. Oh, and she, in Colorado. In Colorado. Where it's snowing right now, I'm sure. Near the mountains. Oh. She moved out there a few years ago and loves it. Beautiful. And, um, and she works in um, communications for okay. a consulting firm. Helps put pack, uh, communications packages together. Awesome. Not, not unlike videos like this. Ah. She would be proud of our work today. Absolutely. <laughs> and and then I also have a son. His name is Gus. Okay. Um, which is another story. I can, you can ask me about that later. Uh, and Gus is 26 years old. All right. So Emily's 28. Gus is 26. And Gus, uh, even in the midst of COVID, he lost his job and he got another wow. job. Oh, and you'll good never for guess Gus. what he's doing. What is he doing? Gus gets paid to play video games. <gasps> That's amazing. I know I'm not a video game player, but I know there's some of you that are. I mean, can you imagine getting paid for that? Wow. That's his job. A dream come true. He thought so. Yes. But it turns out that playing the same video game eight hours a day, Ooh. five days a week, is not as fun as it initially sounded. You know, when you say it like that, you're right. That doesn't sound <laughs> as much fun. But he's doing well with that job. He is. That's and we're happy great. That he has and where does he live? He lives in New Orleans. Oh, good. So he that's stayed awesome. in in New Orleans because that's where Father place. AJ and Shannon are from. They came up from New Orleans, Louisiana, where it's usually warm and sunny, right? Sixty-five degrees and sunny. Wow. Except for May, June, July, August, and September, <laughs> when it tends to be more like ninety-five degrees. Ooh, really mm -hmm. hot. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, my last question for today is, do you have a pet? I do. Ooh. I do. It's actually, um, it was, he was living with Shannon before we met. Okay. And his name is George Cooper. Ooh. And you'll recognize George Cooper. He's a very distinguished looking little guy. He, um, he has bushy eyebrows and a bushy <laughs> beard. Um, and he'll be around some, so maybe That's you'll right. get a chance to meet him. Well, you know George what? Maybe Cooper. next week we can meet George, because does he do tricks? Oh, he does a couple of tricks. <gasps> Exciting. A couple of tricks. All righty. Well, Father AJ, thank you so mm. much for today. This was thank great. Thank you, Muffy. Thank and you, kids, for watching. I know. I'm so glad you got to meet Father AJ, and we'll have more of this each week. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Bye. God bless y'all. See you soon, I hope. Okay, and the craft that we have for you all today is this epiphany star. So you can color it and put it together and use it to remind you that Jesus was the light that came into the world and the star was the light that guided the wise men to him and that you are a light and you can be a light to all around you. So Absolutely. Have fun with that. I know, I had a great time. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna do our meditation of sitting still like a frog 
So when I sound the chime, let's get ready. Today, we are gonna sit still like a frog. All you need to do is sit with your back up straight. You can stretch your legs out in front of you or you can crisscross them. I want you to focus on yourself. You can close your eyes if you want to, you can half close them or you can keep them open. What I want you to do is I want you to be comfortable. Did you know that frogs can leap for very great distances and they can croak very loudly? But did you know that they also too can sit still for a very long time and do nothing at all? It can be difficult to sit still at first for a long time, but the more you practice, the better you get at it. And soon, you'll be used to it. Like a frog, you are sitting as still as you possibly can. Sitting still like this can help you feel calm. Your legs are still, your arms are still, your head is still, and your bottom is still. While you're sitting still, you may notice that something is always moving. Maybe your eyes, or a finger, or your bottom, and that's okay because the more you practice, the better you get at sitting still like a frog. But there's another thing that is always constantly moving, no matter how hard you try to sit still, and that is your breath. Put your hands on your belly and feel your breath up a bit and down a bit and up a bit and down a bit. You're doing a good job. Try practicing it for a few more times by yourself, feeling your breath up and down. up and down. When you listen to your breath, it can be very helpful, especially when you fall down and hurt yourself, or if you're angry, or if you're just tired and want to rest. You may want to practice sitting still like a frog tomorrow or the next day. And I hope you do. And I hope you find that this helps and that you enjoy it. Mm. Feel better? I do. You know what, after so. the holidays, it's nice to re kind of relax, I think. Yes. It really makes me, even though it was a lot of fun, Sometimes you just need to relax. And so now we're gonna get ready and close with prayer. God, God of surprises, surprises and gifts, you revealed yourself as a newborn baby. And with a star, you led the peoples of the earth to worship Jesus, your only son. Lead us to see you face to face and help us to discover our gifts and talents so that we may offer them up to you and your service. Let, Let us be Jesus' light in the world today. Amen. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Have see a great week, and we'll see you see soon. You next time. Bye. Bye.